All right, we are tracking Hurricane Milton. It is churning off the Florida Gulf Coast, and its storm path is headed toward the west coast of Florida, where it will likely bring life-threatening storm surge, as well as heavy rain and strong winds. Milton is currently a Category 4 storm, and it did pick up a lot of strength um, recently. We want to now cross to our CBS News correspondent, Christian Benavides. He's tracking everything from St. Petersburg in Florida, and this is a place still, as you've been reporting, Christian, recovering from Helene, but You're how good. serious yeah, is the situation alive, now? Right? Yeah. Errol, at this point, you can just take a look at what this area looks like. We're in St. Pete Beach. Uh, this is a barrier island community. There are still folks here, as you can see. Uh, we spoke to a woman here, Suzanne, who is currently evacuating. Uh, she mentioned to me, uh, she walked me through her experience. She rode out Helene and she said she almost died. And this time she is evacuating for Milton because all this damage that you see around me from Helene was caused by five feet of storm surge. Currently, what the forecast is showing is upwards of 15 feet of storm surge here. That's something that this area hasn't seen in modern history. And what officials are also worried about are these piles of debris, you know, from this small pile to entire homes. Officials are concerned that when, uh, when Milton makes landfall, all of, it, all of this debris could get picked up because of the wind and uh, become dangerous projectiles that they could also block storm drains. So they are, uh, it's really, you know, a rush to try to get this to a location where it won't just scatter everywhere. But I mean, just take a look. This is what you see for blocks and blocks and blocks uh, from Helene that uh, there, there's so much cleanup to do and it's a race against the clock to try to get this to some place where it won't cause that sort of damage. So that's what's happening here uh, at this point. And as you yeah. can see, people, as I mentioned, uh, like Susan, who we spoke to, just uh, evacuating, trying to make sure that they are out of here uh, by the time that Milton is here. Governor Ron DeSantis held an emergency press conference this morning saying he's putting fuel around the state. He's making sure there are protective barriers around some hospitals. Um, talk to me about preparations outside of where you are to keep people safe. It's just so unnerving seeing everything you're showing us. Yeah, I, well, you know, people are trying to prepare, but you got to remember Tampa is such a low lying area that practically, uh, you know, a huge chunk of uh, Tampa proper, downtown Tampa, all of that has to be evacuated. And here's the thing, Errol, you've got so many folks that already uh, had to leave and find shelter elsewhere in places like hotels, uh, anywhere because of Helene. And now you've got Milton, so you don't have a lot of places to go. Christian Benavides, we will continue to track your reporting. You and the team stay safe. Thank you very much. Let's now bring in uh, CBS News Philadelphia meteorologist Grant Gilmore. Grant, at some point, this storm jumped up to a five. The temperature in the Gulf is so warm. Yeah. Let us know what to expect where it is now. It's incredible how much it intensified yesterday, Errol. It went from a Category 1 early yesterday morning to a Category 5 yesterday around midday. So here's the thing. Out in advance of Milton now, 23 million people are underneath some sort of tropical storm, tropical or tropical storm watcher warning or hurricane watcher warning. With those hurricane warnings extended from the Tampa coast to the east coast over on Cape Canaveral with then tropical storm warnings in effect to the north and south of those hurricane warnings. Here's the latest with Milton. It went through what's called an eyewall replacement cycle where that small pinhole eyewall yesterday collapsed and another eye wall around the outside of it developed. So that is a process that causes it to weaken, but now it's primed and ready to actually begin strengthening once again. It's a very powerful Category 4 hurricane with wind speeds at 145 miles per hour moving to the east-northeast at 12 miles per hour. Let me take you a little closer. You can see the eye wall actually a little bit bigger than the eye yesterday. And that's that secondary eye that formed. And now it's ready to start strengthening again as it moves over those warm waters in the South Gulf of Mexico. Here's one thing about Milton that's very different from Helene. It's actually much smaller. Those tropical storm force winds extend out 105 miles from the center of the storm. Whereas Helene, those tropical storm force winds extended out over 300 miles from the center of the storm. The hurricane force winds, those category four and five force winds 
only extend out about 300 miles, or rather 30 miles from the center of the storm. The thing is, though, those winds and that wind field are expected to expand as we go through the next couple of days. And we expect those tropical storm force winds to begin to hit Florida sometime tomorrow around midday. So that's the amount of time that we've got for everyone in Florida to gradually get their preparations in order and then hunker down and get ready for the worst of those conditions. Those are the winds and then the surge. That is the most immediate concern and life-threatening concern along the coast, especially in Tampa Bay, where the forecast is for now between 10 to 15 feet of water being pushed onto normally dry ground. That's why we've got all those evacuations in place across many of those coastal communities across the west coast of Florida. In fact, you even have some surge concerns all the way up into portions of South Carolina as the storm moves across the state of Florida and then starts to throw some of that water from the Atlantic back onto the southeast coast. Here's the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. You see how it's forecast to become a Category 5 hurricane once again by midday today. It'll then encounter some shear, but really the damage is already done from a surge perspective. All of those winds are going to push that water up onto the shore, still expected it to make landfall as a powerful Category 3, potentially a Category 4 hurricane, and that's going to cause potentially catastrophic damage to somewhere along the Gulf Coast of Florida. Again, those tropical storm force winds are expected to arrive by sundown tomorrow. So you've got about 24 hours or so to hurry to get your preparations in order before the conditions really begin to deteriorate. And then, of course, inland, there's going to be a flood concern as well, Errol. Uh, some places could pick up over a foot of rainfall, generally north of the center of the track. More yeah. on Milton coming up in just a bit. Grant, this is when technology could save people's lives. If they're in Florida, please listen to Grant, listen to Governor DeSantis, pay attention to the evacuation orders. We'll get another update from you before the hour is out. Grant, thanks so much. And as you might imagine, air travel across the United States is expected to be impacted by Hurricane Milton. This storm quickly approaching. CBS News New York reporter Elijah Westbrook is following that story for us from nearby at Newark Liberty International Airport. Elijah, what are you seeing? And good morning. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're someone who is traveling down to Florida either today or tomorrow, your flight will likely be impacted in some form or fashion. Uh, nearly every airline has put out a travel advisory uh, urging folks to take advantage of their cancellation policies because in some cases you are eligible for a full refund. And of course, this is because of that looming storm that is now inching closer to Florida. We also want to mention that most Multiple airports are set to close uh, because of this hurricane. Tampa Airport, for instance, will shut down at 9 a.m. and is expected to remain closed until further notice. Uh, we also see here Sarasota Airport will close at some point this afternoon. And then as we look ahead to tomorrow, Orlando and Fort Myers airports will close in the morning. Uh, these are major airports, and because of this looming storm, there's just no way of really getting around it. So it's best at this point to check in with your air carrier to make sure that you're able to get to your destinations. As the latest at this time from Terminal B here at Newark Airport, Elijah Westbrook, CBS News, New York.